Coming up, we'll show you how Lexington High School students are learning the dangers of distracted driving. A rare bourbon has people in another state lining up to buy it. More on the pursuit of Pappy Van Winkle ahead. This is WKYT News at 430. Good afternoon, Sam Dick and Amber Philpott reporting. A community is paying its last respects to a fallen officer today. This is a live picture from Richmond. Visitation for Officer Daniel Ellis is going on right now at Eastern Kentucky University. Ellis was shot nearly a week ago while investigating a robbery and died a couple of days later. The visitation is open to anyone who would like to pay their respects. It ends tonight at 8. Our Sean Moody has more on how people in Madison County are remembering the fallen officer. It's our top story at 430. The workers here inside this Gulf station tell me they feel a special connection to what happened that day because Officer Ellis was investigating a report of a robbery when he was killed. Now they try and do everything they can to remember it. Yeah, you doing? This is where Officer Daniel Ellis's final investigation began. A woman here at this gas station reported an attempted robbery, and police say the investigation into that led Ellis to the apartment where he was shot. Ever since then, the workers inside this Gulf station have been honoring Ellis. They're wearing armbands with his badge number, and there are blue ribbons all over. At the counter, Missy McCoy is giving out wristbands she made and taking donations for Ellis's family. We've collected uh, just about $500 already, and people don't think twice about putting all of their change in, whether it's change or dollars. There's also now a large memorial at the apartment complex where Officer Ellis was shot. Coming up on WKYT News at 6, I'll talk with people who live in that area about how they're trying to honor him. In Richmond, Sean Moody, WKYT. And one more tribute. When the gas station closes tonight, they're going to change the numbers on the price sign to 457 in honor of Officer Ellis. Lexington police say a man was shot while in his car with his one year old child in the back seat. An officer found the driver last night in what looked to be a stranded car on Appian Way. When the officer pulled up, police say the victim stumbled out of the car. He'd been shot twice, including once in the chest, and was rushed to the hospital where he's expected to recover. His 15 month old daughter was not hurt, neither was another passenger in the car who police say didn't stick around. Well, it turned out to be a sunny fall day here in the bluegrass with some chillier temperatures. I pulled up to the station this afternoon. The sun was out, which felt really good out there, Chris. But I guess we have another storm system on the way. Is that right? Yeah, we do. That will arrive as we go into Wednesday night. I think you're, if you like today, you're going to really like the daylight hours of tomorrow. It's tomorrow night. We'll change it up a little bit with some gusty wind, showers, and thunderstorms right now. You look at a temperature map, and you can pick out areas that have had more sun. Upper 50s to our west mid 50s across parts of central Kentucky, low and mid 50s, and look at northeastern Kentucky, struggling to get out of the 40s yet again. Then we look at Defender Radar Network and throw the clouds on there, and look where the clouds are. You can get a 10 to 15 degree swing on a day like this from areas that have sunshine to areas that have clouds, and those clouds will continue to slowly clear on out of town as we go through the evening and a quick drop in temperatures as we go through the next several hours. Big area of low pressure across the Rocky Mountains is going to head toward the Great Lakes and drag a cold front towards central and eastern Kentucky. And about 24 hours from now, guys, we're going to be watching a line of thunderstorms developing across western Kentucky. Coming up in a little bit, we'll track the progress of that front across the rest of the state and talk about the gusty winds that will bring into town as well. Chris, thank you. Students over at Tates Creek High School in Lexington got a lesson today on the dangers of distracted driving. Our Mike Linden was there as students participated in a distracting driving simulation. For most high school students, their cell phones never leave their side. Most students say they're guilty of using them while driving. Don't tell my parents, but yes. Now you don't have to send the message, but you do have to type it. Driving age students at Tates Creek High School took part in a distracted driving simulation today. Indeed, distracted driving is deadly driving. The task? Send a text message while driving 70 miles per hour. It was very, very overwhelming to just like have all the things that you needed to do while keeping your phone in your hand typing a text. Instructors say the length of time it takes to send a text message while driving is between about four and seven seconds. And with your eyes off the road for that amount of time, it's like driving across a football field with your eyes closed. They get behind the wheel and they think it's not going to happen to me. You know, I can, 
I can multitask. I can read a text and send a text, and it doesn't quite work that way. According to the National Highway Traffic Safety Administration, drivers texting while behind the wheel are 23 times more likely to crash than a driver who isn't distracted. Keep your phone in your pocket because it's dangerous and you definitely feel like you're more of a danger on the road than when you're not texting. In Lexington, Mike Linden, WKYT. A good lesson for all of us. According to the Office of Highway Safety, the number of distracted driving deaths is four times higher than from drunk driving. One very rare bottle of bourbon has people in Huntsville, Alabama, lining up around the corner to buy one. We're talking about Pappy Van Winkle, the rare Kentucky bourbon that only goes on sale once a year and for only one day. With a limited supply of 50 bottles, buyers started lining up early yesterday morning, hoping to be one of the lucky buyers. And it's a limited supply here. They think they have about 50 bottles, and so I'm hoping I can get one of those 50. It was kind of like the high-end bottle that you get when you owed somebody a favor or you wanted a favor, so uh, that's the only place I'd ever heard of it before. Went to a restaurant that had it on their list, but I didn't want to pay $100 a shot when I could buy a bottle for about that much. Well, a bottle of Pappy Van Winkle can be aged 10 to 23 years, and it can come with a price tag of $50 to $250 per bottle. The University of Kentucky is pushing for a better showing in this year's SEC game-winning food drive. UK landed at the bottom of the heap in the competition last year. Five SEC schools collected more than 9,000 cans of food for their communities. The Big Blue Pantry receives what's collected from Kentucky's food drive. UK says that's about 200 students use the food bank regularly with more joining every week. You can donate at the Johnson Center, the Patterson Office Tower, and University Health Services Building through November 30th. Well, after a wave of criticism, SeaWorld says it, its famed Shamu show will soon be no more. SeaWorld says it will phase out the killer whale show at its San Diego park by the end of next year. Attendance has dropped and SeaWorld has faced animal cruelty claims after the 2013 documentary Blackfish. No word on if the shows will also end at SeaWorld's other parks in Orlando and San Antonio. It is never too late to join Facebook. Just ask President Obama. The president debuted his own personal page on the social media site. His first post is a two-minute video showing the president walking through the backyard at the White House, urging Americans to protect the planet for future generations. President Obama has been more active on social media as he nears the end of his second term. He joined Twitter in May. With Thanksgiving just over two weeks away, the holidays are finally upon us. And over the weekend, an annual holiday tradition began taking shape in the city of New York as the Rockefeller Center Christmas tree arrived. The 78-foot Norway spruce was cut down last Wednesday in Ulster County in upstate New York. The 10-ton tree was then put on a 100-foot-long trailer and taken to Manhattan. After an 80-mile journey, the tree arrived Friday afternoon. This year's tree was taken from the property of Albert Asendorf and Nancy Polchowski. The annual tree lighting will take place on December 2nd, a ceremony that has been held since 1933. Hard to believe it's not that far off. Oh, no. Christmas. So trees are going up in some people's homes and some gifts are even being wrapped. It's time to think about Christmas here in Kentucky. Some folks are doing just that by creating a special Christmas for children in need. Our Deanne Stevens is out and about today joining us from Wildcat Moving to explain. Hi, Deanne. Hey, good afternoon, guys. We are helping out with this awesome toy drive that just kicked off here at Wildcat Moving. You can help out, too, and these guys here want you to. Ron Gray is with the Toy Chest Charity, and, Ron, you all put a lot of smiling faces on a lot of needy kiddos, don't you? We try to. There are a lot of kids that might not have presents under the tree on Christmas morning, and uh, we work with a lot of schools, a lot of resource centers, uh, and uh, find the kids that are most in need. So take your kids, go shopping, grab some toys, uh, come out to Wildcat Moving, help be a part of uh, something great in our own community. I love what you just said. You said take your kids. I, I, and I try to do this with my girls, is make them realize how grateful we all really are. This is a good opportunity to kind of share the wealth with others and, and to teach the kiddos yeah. what it's like. There's 
there's so many kids who don't have gifts under the tree. Yeah, and we could be in the same shoes that a lot of parents are, mm -hmm. especially in eastern Kentucky, where they've lost their jobs and there's no work. So uh, when we're when we're blessed and we're, when we're when we're thriving, let's give back to those kids that that need a little help. You guys also have a new website at the Toy Chest. Tell us about that. We do. It's thetoychest.org. Just went live this week. You can make a donation on there. We are a 501c3 nonprofit, so your contribution is tax deductible. And at the same time, you're bringing a little Christmas joy to a bunch of kids. How does it make you feel, my dear? Because I followed you over the last couple of years in in your creation of this charity, and now you're seeing that you're seeing what's happening with so many people being helped through it. Well, I think probably the most rewarding thing for me is I took my niece shopping yesterday, and we we bought a bunch of toys for some kids on our list, and also to see people like Raleigh at Wildcat Moving get involved, and other people that believe in what we're doing and want to be a part of something in our own community. Uh, it's validating, it's very rewarding, and it's a great, uh, it's a great team spirit. Absolutely. Part of the team right here, Raleigh Bruner with Wildcat Moving. Raleigh, I love that you guys have jumped on board. What do folks out there need to do? Just bring us their toys. Uh, new toys uh, to 203 Big Run Road, uh, 8 to 5 any day of the week. Um, we'll be happy to take them. And they can just drop them off here and be a part of giving back to others. Exactly. Spread some holiday cheer. And don't forget, if you can't bring the toys here to Wildcat Moving, you can go online, toychest.org, and make that donation now. And you don't, you don't necessarily have to have your Santa hat on, but it does add a little bit to the fun of the cheer. I'm Deanne Stevens, out and about at Wildcat Moving. Tell them, bring the toys. Bring Get on out here. Let's, yeah. wow. Merry Christmas. <laughs> ho, ho, ho. Back to you guys. It is time to get in that mindset for sure, it, right? It's just a month or two away. That's it. The incredible story of a mine collapse in Chile is coming to Hollywood, and Glamour Magazine honors Remarkable Women of the Year. Suzanne Marquez has your eye on entertainment. Glamour Magazine celebrated its Women of the Year. Among the 2015 Trailblazers was Reese Witherspoon, who co-founded a production company to promote women in film. It's also important that people see women are diverse and we're different and dangerous and dynamic and we're not just good or bad, we're not just the wife or the girlfriend, we're actually the leads, the, the heroes of our own stories. Caitlyn Jenner won an award for going public with her transgender journey. And Misty Copeland was a winner as the first African American to be promoted to principal dancer at the American Ballet Theater. Earlier in the day, she joined a celebration at the Empire State Building. Just so privileged to be a black woman and to represent classical ballet and to have people in every community know about it. This year marks the 25th anniversary of Glamour's Women of the Year Awards. Here in Hollywood, a riveting story of survival is bringing out the stars. Antonio Banderas hit the red carpet for the premiere of The 33. He stars as one of the trapped workers in a real-life mine collapse in Chile. Juliette Binoche stars as a miner's sister leading the call for their rescue. The 33 arrives in theaters Friday. That's your Eye on Entertainment. Suzanne Marquez, CBS News, Hollywood. He is really something. Harlan County native Jordan Smith has created quite the internet firestorm after another powerful performance on The Voice. Smith wrapped up the live playoffs last night performing Halo by Beyonce. Here's a quick listen. That gives you chills, doesn't mm -hmm. it? I mean, he is something else. Smith's performance was met with a standing ovation from all four judges. America's vote will now decide if Smith will advance to the next round. You know, we talked about Christmas a minute ago. When do you put up your Christmas tree? Um, right around Thanksgiving, maybe the day after Thanksgiving, okay. somewhere around that weekend. I think our friend over here really jumps the gun. He would mean. do it, I think, today. Would you not, Chris Bailey? How do you know I haven't? <laughs> <laughs> I'm, I'm just saying. Earlier the better in some cases, uh, but yeah, you know, we talked last week about getting out, putting out those Christmas lights on beautiful 70 degree weather. Now it's colder and gets colder and wetter and uglier over the next couple of weeks. So you're probably thinking, hmm, maybe I should have listened last week. All right, forget all that. Let's talk about what's going on now. Starting to see the sun just before it calls it quits in the most of central and eastern Kentucky. Cool spot is Jackson. You're just now getting in on a little sun. 53 Frankfurt, Corbin, and into the Lexington area, seeing a bit of sunshine. 
sunshine as well with those temperatures into the low 50s. Those clouds still hanging tough across the southeast or the northeastern corner of the state with a lot of those readings that are now into the low uh, upper 40s to around 50 degrees. We'll come back in just a few minutes to talk about a cold front that is on the way for late Wednesday. Right now, let's get a check on traffic. Here's Officer Don. I'll check down Lexington traffic flow and collisions this afternoon. We have two. One crash is at Beaver Creek and Eagle Creek. Non-entry collision there causing some issues near that intersection. And, and then another one on the north side over to Broadway and Broadview. A couple of cars involved in that crash, too. It's showing slowdowns on Broadway, but still not a major deal getting past that. Uh, dry times this afternoon other than those two collisions. Should be good to go if you're headed uh, toward, uh, toward Nicholasville. Uh, same deal if you're toward Winchester or into Georgetown this afternoon from Lexington. Now back to you in the studio. All right. One man who takes his hobby seriously and a gator goes shopping. It's the video that will have you talking. Take a look at this. Well, both of us are runners, but this guy takes it to a whole nother level. You know, running plays a part in many people's exercise routine, but most are not as dedicated as this guy. For 50 years, Dr. Ron Hill mm -hmm. has never missed a day of running. For Dr. Hill, it began as a hobby in 1953 when he was still living in his hometown in England. And since 1953, he's now run over 160,000 miles. He's raced in three Olympic events and was the first British national to win the Boston Marathon in the 70s. Keep on moving. Absolutely. All right, take a look at this. Some people have weird hobbies like a dental hygienist who's also a licensed trapper. Oh. She was called out to a mall parking lot in Houston to capture this big fellow who earned the nickname Godzilla. She says it took a while to wrangle the 12 foot, 800 pound gator. We've tried several different attempts on how to catch him. Finally, we thought we had him wore out enough where we might be able to put two people on the back of him and hold his mouth that way and kind of outweigh him, which clearly did not work. Well, they eventually got him secured and with help from a forklift from Home Depot, got him to an alligator sanctuary. My question in all of this yes. is, how do you ever know that that's a hobby and something you're interested in? When do you first try that? I don't know. I mean, because you can't really practice it, can you, with a live gator? I mean, you either do it or you don't. I don't know. I'm gonna Beyond me. I'm going to stick to running. How about that? Much safer. You won't get eaten. <laughs> Absolutely. All right. Much more to come here on WKYT at 5 o'clock.